Welcome to How to Build Your First Marine Aquarium, Part 1. My name is Matthew, and I am an aquarium enthusiast. I built my first freshwater aquarium almost 20 years ago, but my dreams were always a bit saltier. If you were at all like me, then you wanted nothing more than a saltwater tank. But the prospect of where to begin seemed daunting, and maybe still seems daunting. Some cursory Google searches bring up a dizzying array of specialized equipment, unintelligible acronyms, and a seeming need for a postdoc degree in biochemistry. But I'm here to tell you that starting your first marine aquarium is within reach. This will not happen overnight, nor should it. The last thing you want is to unknowingly kill your livestock because you rush to the end goal without learning the intermediary steps first. Anything worth doing is worth doing well, or that's at least what I think. So let's get started. My hope for each of you is that by the end of this how-to series, you will feel confident enough to begin building your first marine aquarium. I am not going to pretend to be an expert because I am not, but what I am is a teacher with enough experience to give any beginner the foundation necessary for success. I have heard that it takes upwards of 10,000 hours to master any craft, and this hobby is no exception. So let's fast forward to the end goal. Take a moment to imagine your dream aquarium. Maybe it's a 500 gallon behemoth with as many species of exotic fish as possible. Maybe it's a teeny tiny desktop nano tank with a single dart fish and several colorful corals. Maybe you have been fascinated by the symbiotic relationship between clownfish and anemones. Every type of tank Every different livestock option is going to entail different equipment and different steps to get there. But if you have a clear goal, you can focus in on your studies after learning the basics from these videos. I have broken all types of marine aquariums into four categories based on level of difficulty. The first and potentially most simple type is a fish only aquarium with fake decorations. This isn't to say that there aren't expert-only aquariums in this fish-only category, but there are plenty of hardy, non-aggressive saltwater fish to choose from that are perfect for a beginner. You may be wondering what makes some fish so much more difficult to keep than others. There are so many factors, but here are a few. Number one is temperament. Does this species play well with others? Number two is health. Is this species prone to illness? Number three, size. How much space does this species need? And number four, diet. Will this species easily accept pellet or flake foods? Or does it need to be target fed a special diet? Or maybe even have an active refugium that can pump out large quantities of copepods? Head over to liveaquaria.com to browse a large selection of fish that are perfect for beginners. Category number two is only slightly more difficult to build than a fish-only tank. Category two is what we call in the hobby a fowler tank, which is an acronym for fish only with live rock. The addition of live rock offers many positive benefits to an aquarium, but also requires you to learn a lot more to make it successful. With the introduction of live rock, you will need to learn more about the following. Number one, different types of rock. Number two, wet versus dry live rock. Number three, nuisance algae. Number four, desirable and undesirable hitchhikers. And number five, how to cure live rock. A fowler tank can offer enhanced biological filtration as well as a natural home for future corals, fish, and beneficial bacteria. Category number three is a significant step up in terms of difficulty, 
because we are now venturing into the world of corals. In addition to fish and live rock, we are now adding easy to care for LPS corals. LPS stands for large polyp stony corals. These corals secrete a calcium carbonate shell and typically have large, long, fleshy polyps. Corals are some of the most complex and beautiful animals in the world, and they are the reason that many of us get into this hobby in the first place. But corals, like anemones, are extremely complex and have a wide range of needs. In order to introduce corals into your tank, here are some topics we will need to learn more about. Number one, placement. Number two, lighting, including PAR, wavelengths, and different types. Number three, feeding requirements. Number four, water flow and movement through your tank. Number five, ideal water parameters for your coral. And number six, how aggressive your coral is. Although this can be daunting, don't get discouraged. Learning about corals is a lifelong process, and you can start with one easy-to-care-for LPS coral and grow your knowledge from there. The fourth and last category is for experts only. These are tanks that include many hard-to-keep SPS, or small polyp stony corals, anemones, finicky species of fish and invertebrates, and livestock that historically do not thrive in a marine aquarium setting. I truly believe that if a beginner starts slowly, he or she can easily set up a Category 3 tank as their first tank. But so much in this hobby is learned through trial and error that I would encourage each of you to get your footing with Categories 1 to 3 first before venturing into this expert-only level. Just as a side note, I do not even put myself in this final category. I personally feel that I could start to venture into the expert-only arena, but the time and money necessary to be successful are more than I'm willing to put forth. Now that we have briefly reviewed the four categories of marine aquariums based on difficulty, let's now shift our focus to four key issues to consider before starting your first build. Number one is budget. Unless you are independently wealthy and have thousands upon thousands of dollars to throw around, you will need to think long and hard about how much money you are willing to put into this hobby. There is a large initial outlay of cash necessary, and then ongoing maintenance costs and costs to buy fish, corals, and inverts. We will go into details and ways to save money in a later video, but here are some basic numbers. If you want to build a 50-gallon tank, your initial outlay of cash could be anywhere from $1,500 on the cheaper end to more than $5,000. Most of us start our first build one piece of equipment at a time. My first tank sat in my living room, empty, for six months while I slowly pieced it together. Key issue number two is location. Take a look around your home. What are the options for where to put your tank? Keep in mind that your tank needs to be out of any direct sunlight and not near windows or drafty areas. Also, do you have a dedicated breaker in your electrical panel just for the tank? If you live somewhere with frequent power outages, you will need an emergency backup plan as your tank inhabitants can suffocate to death in as little as 12 hours without power. Key issue number three is size. How many gallons is your tank going to be? How much is your tank going to weigh? One gallon of water weighs about 8.3 pounds. So that means a 50 gallon tank will weigh more than 415 pounds with just the water alone. Can your floor support this weight or do you need to have a contractor come in, take a peek and possibly reinforce your floor? The larger the size of your tank, the easier it is to maintain healthy and stable water parameters, but the more time and money it's going to take as well. And the last thing to consider is your livestock. If your heart is set on a specific combination of livestock, that will likely dictate the size and type of tank required. 
Over the next several videos, we are going to dive deep into topics you may have never considered or even heard of before. Think of this series as an introductory level college course called Marine Aquarium Husbandry 101. My hope as your teacher is not to make you an expert, but to lay a solid foundation and expose you to the breadth of this hobby. It will be up to you to take what you've learned and decide the next steps to build your first marine aquarium. If you liked what you saw and want to stay updated with this series, please subscribe to my channel, Matthew's Reef, below. Thanks for watching and happy reefing.